Okay, thank you, Patel. All right, so the guys, thank you for joining. The, the point of this is we're going to do this, record it, and then just post it on YouTube or some public thing so that then what, can, what will happen is subsequent fellows or in subsequent years, if you want to go back and look at it again, you just you just have a free resource, you know, or and anybody from anywhere in the world can look at this and say, hey, look, this is a kind of a nice way to prepare for the boards. No, no course fee required, no registration, no, no CME, nothing. You just go in and watch it on YouTube. So that's what we're going to do. And I want you guys to ask questions because if you don't ask, I have no idea what I'm, you know, I have no idea what level I'm, you know, teaching at or whether you can see the findings or whether there's additional questions that you feel, hey, will we have this or that for the boards? So please, please interrupt me and ask questions. Okay. Everybody okay with that? All right. Thank you. So we are going to show you some questions. So for each question, I'll kind of make up a STEM and then I'll ask you guys what you think your, your answer is. And then maybe Aparna can um, relay your answers or you can post them in the chat and, and maybe I can see them here or Aparna can tell me what's being posted in the chat. Either way. So both ways are okay. Ready? All right, let's do this. So this is a, let's say 62 year old man who uh, came in with fever, a chills, a, a few constitutional symptoms and um, to the emergency room actually and, and was found to have on a chest CT a big area of, of almost mass-like consolidation involving the right upper and a little bit of the right middle lobes. And um, a uh, let's say a CT guided needle biopsy of that area of mass-like consolidation was performed. Of course, there was clinical uh, suspicion for either an infection or rule out malignancy. And this is what the CT guided needle biopsy showed. So this guy, I, we don't have anything else in the stem except this person is from Wisconsin and then the age and sex that I told you. There's no other pertinent travel history or, or exposure history or anything else. So from Wisconsin, 60 something year old man, fever and chills and a big area of mass like consolidation in the left up, right upper lobe, right middle, a uh, little bit of right middle. So anybody, does anybody have an answer or guess? Aparna, do we have any people chiming in? So maybe I'll take the first one just. So okay, yeah, go for it. Overwhelmed. Well, so looking at this, I mean, I do see some, I would think of a fungal organism, um, just think hearing about his symptoms, and I yes. do see some um, what I think looks like some type of hyphae. Can you see my Can you see my arrow, Aparna? Yes. Okay, so you're saying you see hyphae, right? Yeah. The... So let me let me point to a couple of things, and you tell me what they are. All right. So I but pointing to this. What is that, Aparna? That thing there, like here. I'm not sure. This one and that one and that and this and this. Yeah. Can you see the arrow? I wonder if I can use a different kind of pointer. Is there a way to do it or no? I think so. Uh, the bottom left corner, do you see anything? Let's try this. Let's try this and see if I can. So how about this? Do you see that? The annotation? Yeah. What are those? Do you guys see those things? The reason I'm showing you those is those are just the nuclei of the background histiocytes. So that's something you want to tune out, right? So that's the background inflammatory reaction. The thing that is really where the money is, is this thing here. Is that what you were calling hyphae, Aparna? Uh, no, actually lower down. I lower down. I... So like here? Yeah. So those four things are all nuclei. One, two, three, four. Those are all nuclei of uh, histiocytes. And the reason there's so many histiocytes here is this is a sort of granulomatous reaction to the organism. So the money is not there. It's actually here. This circle and this circle. Now, can you tell what it is? So yes. these are, yeah. Yes. Signet ring cells? Yeah, they look like signet ring cells, right? So big and round. So the reason they're not hyphae, let me just give you a little tutorial here. So hyphae look like this. They should be elongated ribbon-like things, right? Long, like a cylinder. Yeasts are round. 
So you want to first, when you think something is a fungus, say, is it round or is it long? If it's long, you're dealing with hypey and then you're dealing with things like aspergillus, mucor, right? That group. If you're yeah. dealing with a yeast around something round, you're dealing with either histoplasma, cryptococcus, blastomyces, or coccidioides. Those are, should be your four things on it. So is this round or is it elongated? It should be round. Round, right. So that's what these things are. So you are absolutely correct about fungus, except that these are not hyphae, they are yeasts. So they are round. And now you see there's like a one round here and another round there. Any idea where there are two rounds together? Like budding. Yes, budding. That's perfect. And now all you have to do is figure out, is the base of the bud narrow or broad? And let me just make a diagram for that. So this would be a oh. narrow base bud. Like the bud actually connects to the mother by a narrow base. Yeah, so this would be broad based. Budding. It is broad based budding, Aparna. We have uh, we have blasto as our guest. We have blastomyces. Correct. So you guys are absolutely right. So you got, guys got the morphology you're looking for. Yes. You're yeah. looking for a round thing that's connected to another round thing by a sort of a flat base. It's not like a little teardrop coming off of another teardrop. That would be a narrow base bud. And the differential for narrow base buds is histoplasma and cryptococcus. That's the only two things that do that. So you have pretty much narrowed it down if you get those two. I see you guys are uh, smiling in the background. That means you got it right or somebody got the right answer back there. <laughs> so it looks like somebody had it right. Okay, so blastomyces. It's just mind blown. <laughs> okay, blastomyces. The other thing to remember is the uh, budding is very easy to remember because all the things in the mnemonic are B. Blastomyces, broad based budding, B, 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 B. It's very easy to remember. Remember, those people with blastomyces are usually, you know, they might give you something in the stem about woodwork or rural or exposure to, you know, some sort of a farming kind of thing around the Great Lakes area. That's why I said Wisconsin, you know, either from Illinois or Wisconsin, that's classic. And some sort of wood exposure would be a good a thing. Big mass like consolidation, febrile skin lesions, those would be other things in the stem you're looking for. Um, yeah, I think that would be pretty much it for Blasto. Any questions, Aparna, or anybody else? See, there, there's one kind of like stain that we usually think about for Blasto. So, um, GMS is the standard stain for all fungal organisms. Grocot, methanamine, silver. Of, of course, this is not that, this is just standard HE. But if you did a Grocot methanamine silver, every fungus would turn black. So that's not specific for blasto. It's like a, a stain for every fungus and that would stain blasto as well. You do not have a specific stain for blastomyces. There's no specific like diagnostic stain. And ac actually you don't need it because this has a very pathognomonic budding pattern. So you don't really need any other stain. Is that, does that answer your question, Aparna, or what, were you looking for something? Yeah, no, it was just GMS staining for all fungal. GMS, yes. All right, Sai, I see your mind is blown. I'm going to do some more mind blowing with the next, next few uh, uh, images. Ready for next one? All right, let's see. I hope these annotations clear on the next. It doesn't, huh? How do I get rid of this? Do I? I think you can just click this, right? Oh, yeah. I wonder how this... Options. If there's a way to cancel annotations from the, and the little like, Options. Oh, there it is. Annotate. And then uh, under annotate, does it say clear? Clear all drawings. Okay, we're, the, we're on to the next one. Okay, guys, ready for what is number two? So this patient, uh, thank God there's a CT, huh? So this patient was a, um, let's say, 24-year-old man who got into a motor vehicle accident and broke his clavicle. And then for some reason, during the workup of that injury, he got a chest X-ray, an abnormality was noted, and then he got a follow-up chest CT. On the follow-up chest CT, you see this little solitary lung nodule uh, on the left lung. And um, because of clinical suspicion for malignancy, a CT-guided needle biopsy, core needle biopsy was performed. And this is what the CT guided core needle biopsy showed. So any, any takers for what this is? So there's nothing really else helpful in the stem other than incidentally detected lung nodule in a relatively young person. Let's say the person is from um, upstate New York. No other travel history or anything else. Any mm -hmm. guesses? Anybody? Yeah. 
Someone asking, does he have pigeons? What's that? Does he have pigeons? Does he have pigeons? Uh, no, he does not. Uh, and wh why are you guessing that, Shanti? That looks like histo or maybe crypto? Histo or crypto? Yeah, very good answers. Based on what? The person who guessed this, what did they base that on? So, I mean, again, this looks like fungal staining, and there yes. is capsule around each of the organisms. I don't, I can't really tell if it's like not as clear as the last one to say, like, is this broad based bud, uh, budding or sorry, narrow based budding? But yes, um, I do see maybe some budding. So this is why. Yes, yes, good answer. Does so, does anybody know what stain this is? Is this the stain, same stain as the previous one? No. GMS. I think this is GMS, correct. So remember guys, this is very easy to, to recognize a GMS. The background will be green and the thing that's staining will be black. That's as easy as it gets. The background is green and the organism is black. So if you see that, you know it's a GMS. And if you see a GMS, you pretty much know it's a fungus because that's why they would have done it, right? That's why they're giving you that stain. So among the fungi, you guys very correctly pointed out. Let me just go back to the annotation. Um, Aparna, do you find the annotate thing helpful that I'm doing here? Yes, yeah, super helpful. Helpful? Okay, let me then do it again, although it's a little bit painful, but I think it's very helpful to show stuff. Um, so where's the annotate thing here? Is it this? Where did I get it from last time? We it, it's already on, I think. Okay. So. <laughs> So there is each one like that. Each little thing is one fungal yeast. These are small in size. Now, this is hard for you guys to tell because you don't see this on a regular basis. But if you see a fungus like this, which is sort of oval and then tapers at each side, kind of like a, I don't know what that shape is, but it's like a teardrop and that there's a tear on the other side too. So oval or tapered shape, this is an oval yeast. You really should be thinking histoplasmosis. And then you're looking for narrow base buds. So you guys are actually right. There are narrow base buds here. So here is an example of a narrow base bud. See where it, where the mother and the daughter attach, there's a very small base. It's not broad like the previous one. So yeah, actually there is a lot of narrow base budding here. And then Aparna and, and folks, if I asked you, do these yeast looks roughly the same in size or are they markedly variable from yeast to yeast? What would you say? The same, though there are maybe some larger. They're all about the same. Yeah, so that's very helpful also for histoplasma. In histoplasma, they're all the same in size. Very uniform in size, which is about two to five microns, but there's no way to tell the exact size from most pictures that people give you in the boards or even under a microscope. So you have to go by uniformity. They're all uniform. They are. Uh, they show narrow base budding, and that's virtually then diagnostic of histoplasma. Also, the stem is right, right? Because you're in the in an endemic area like upstate New York or Ohio, Mississippi River Valley, to find a solitary lung nodule like this, uh, being a histoplasma granuloma is actually very common. So it's not at not at all um, surprising that this patient has a histoplasmoma. And this so, is what it looks like on GMS. Any any questions, Aparna? Anybody else? I see some of the other clues are always like decaying material, bat caves, or like a soil, like exposure or chicken coops or something. Yes. So if they told you the patient went spelunking just before he got this, that would be a thing, you know, or uh, was involved in Earth Day preparations, or you know, had a had a uh, some sort of a bird coop in his house. I think that's a little artificial because most patients with these solitary lung nodules do not have that history. So that's not really correct. Actually, where the history pertains the most is with acute pulmonary histoplasmosis, which is a bilateral infiltrate. So, you know, and patients get acutely febrile and sick. That's where the history often is helpful because there is a history in that acute episode. By the time you get to these late nodules, you know, residual nodule, there is no history in most it's patients. More of a chronic. Uh... Like what about chronic what? Is this more of like a chronic type of presentation with this like solitary lung nodule? Yes, correct. This is a chronic presentation. So typically what happens is the exposure in such patients is so mild or, or you know, it overlaps so much with any other uh, flu-like illness that they don't even know that they had uh, a fungal infection before. So the interval between that and de detecting your lung nodule could be months, could be years. 
you know, by the time you see the nodule, the previous exposure is almost never apparent. So this would almost always be an incidental discovery uh, without any prior history. So you wouldn't, clinically, you wouldn't have any clues. Um, so it, it's, it's a difficult diagnosis to make clinically. That's why you need a biopsy, right? If you, if you had a obvious clinical history, it would be much, much easier. I do have a question here. Sure. Can you see this on an HNE staining? Um, so, Shavanti has a question if you could see this on HNE staining, or would you need GMS? In yeah, that's a great question. Great because it's right up my alley. You know, I've written several papers on this issue. So, the, the, the answer is so, in these old residual nodules, like you're seeing here, you know, that cause a single lung nodule in an incidentally discovered in an immunocompetent patient you actually do not see the organisms on HNE. All you see is a necrotizing granuloma. And when you look at that at high magnification, you cannot see the bugs. It's invisible. Even though they're there, they're invisible. So when you do a GMS, it looks like this and you can make the diagnosis. Now the opposite situation of that is disseminated histoplasmosis where patients are immunocompromised. You know this usual settings, HIV AIDS and transplants and so forth. In those patients, the organisms fill up histiocytes. They don't cause a necrotizing granuloma. And in those histiocytes, you can see the bug on HNE. So the ability to see the bug on HNE actually tells you that the patient is immunocompromised and this, this infection is probably already disseminated. So that's a great question. Uh, the visibility on HNE is a surrogate marker for immunocompromised state and dissemination. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. Yeah, any other question? That was a terrific question, very good. Anyone else? No? All right, let's clear this uh, drawing and let's go to the next one. I think I have to also X out of this, yeah. All right, so here's my next um, picture. This patient is a, um, a seven, uh, well, let's see, is a 55 year old uh, heart transplant, heart lung transplant recipient who was found to have a 2.5 centimeter PET positive subpleural lung nodule. A uh, CT guided lung biopsy again was performed. Uh, the clinical suspicion was again, infection, rule out malignancy, post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorder. Those were the differentials. And um, a lung biopsy, CT guided lung biopsy was performed. Thoughts, anybody? Giant so I think we still see like those same histiocytes maybe that we saw. Yes, earlier. very good. Yeah, absolutely. That's correct. But then similar, like encapsulated. Organism. Yeah, so these are the histiocytes. Would you guys agree that this is a giant cell, guys? You see that? Yeah, we had someone say giant cells. So. Yeah. And then you said, Aparna, what do you see in it? I, I'm wondering if these are just like encapsulated organisms. The, very good. Now, I, I think the jumping to the encapsulated is a little bit of a jump. You're jumping ahead, but I see the point. What you're talking about is this, right, Aparna? This little space? Yeah. Correct. So you're absolutely right. There is an organism and there's a space around it. Now, can you tell me if they are hyphae or yeast? Um, well, they're, they're yeast, right? So they're Correct. So you have already narrowed it down to four things. And uh, now Tell me which one of those four it is. Oh, blasto and histo. So maybe Correct. Probably, I think. Uh, that's the one with encapsulation. Okay. Anybody? We've got guesses of crypto and coxy, but I, I think crypto is encapsulated, I thought. Yes. So, uh, so the problem, so actually it is, one of your guesses is correct. It is actually cryptococcus. That's correct. Now, crypto, I'll tell you how to identify that. So these yeasts also show narrow base budding. See that, like that one? There's a narrow base bud there. This kind of a halo around the yeast is very typical of cryptococcus. You can actually see it in histo too, but if you see it's this clearly and the, the organisms are varying in cell size. Can you see that, Aparna? There's like a big one here, then there's a smaller one there. That basically should clinch the diagnosis. So you have an organism with a halo around it. It's a yeast. You have varying cell sizes and you have narrow base budding. But they will actually not make it that hard for you. They will almost always give you a mucic stain along with this. 
and the music arm in stain will be positive in the in the wall of this organism it's a it's an orange looking stain and they will tell you it's music arm pink or orange so yes cryptococcus is the correct answer coxy is not correct because coxy needs what it needs is a big like a big organ organism like that and then there'll be like smaller ones inside it like this and this big one will have like a like a thick wall so the big thing is called a spherule and the smaller things inside that are called endospores so if you see that then you should be thinking thinking coxy coccidioides also for coxy they will give you a, a usually a hint in the stem so they'll tell you it's from arizona or new mexico or southern california if you are not getting that hint in the stem it's probably not coxy now for crypto you will not get a hint in the stem because crypto is a is not an endemic fungus right you can get it anywhere in the world so maybe that's also a hint that you don't have a they don't mention the geog geographical location in the stem is sort of a hint towards crypto among the four e's is that clear to everybody yes any yeah. questions aparna anybody any questions no all right We're okay good. look remember look for the halo in the in crypto that will be helpful to you guys when you when you get a real case and remember the, remember to look for music armin if there's a music armin stain it's got to be crypto if it's positive. All right, let's go to the next case. All right, guys. So uh, this is this is difficult. Let's skip this. Let's go to this one. I think this is a great one. Let's go to um, so the stem for this one is this patient is a, a sixty-three year old renal transplant recipient who for uh, the past three or four weeks has been developing increasing weakness, constitutional symptoms, weakness, malaise, fatigue, a, a little bit of cough, very mild dyspnea, but really weakness, malaise, fatigue, fever, um, and then was you know worked up and found to have profound thrombocytopenia uh, and leukopenia. Uh, and the uh, liver function tests were deranged and a chest CT showed the findings you see here, bilateral ground glass opacities. Um, so a transbronchial lung biopsy was performed and shows the findings shown at the bottom. And then uh, cultures were performed, which showed the findings shown at the top right. So what is going on here, guys? Any Anybody? So, I mean... The top right, that stain, I can see, and this is what I would call probably hyphae. Yeah, hyphae and Yes, but remember that's at an in culture, Aparna. So there's that's also a clue. The yeah. fact that you're seeing hyphae in cultures, and what are you seeing on the tissue? Running. So, I mean, this makes me think of Canada <laughs> because it can do. This makes it a dimorphic organism. So, dimorphic is something that is. Uh, one kind of form in the cultures and another in the in the human being. So what they call it is mold in the cold, yeast in the beast. <laughs> mold in the cold, yeast in the beast. <laughs> okay. Right? So that's the dimorphic organisms. Like like which one? Can you name one dimorphic fungus? I mean, all of these things, Canada can also do it too. Yes. So candida, the thing is, it's not really dimorphic like this. It has yeast and pseudohyphae, but in the same thing, so on histology. Mm -hmm. So candida is not like one thing in one and one thing in another. It's, it's both in the, same, in the same. So when you see candida in, let's say, an esophagus or in a lung, there are yeast and pseudohyphae both together in the same specimen. It's not, dimorph it's not thermally dimorphic. So this doesn't fit with candida for that reason. Yeah, Mucor? Mucor would not be yeast in the beast. Mucor is hyphae. Yes, yes, correct. So it would be in that group. So the answer here, guys, is histoplasma. So these, so remember how I was talking about you can see the organism on H &E in disseminated form? This is what it looks like. So each, these things like each nucleus here, is the nuclear let me let me go to annotate so i can show it better i sometimes have difficult to get it to pop up okay here it is all right so let's uh, select one cell so let's select this cell here so that whole thing is one cytoplasm of one big histiocyte 
let me select another one that's another one this is another one so these all these cells are humongous histiocytes whose cytoplasm is filled with these little dots can you see the dots guys each, yes. each of these dots is a small like ring form and it is actually a yeast so each one of those is a yeast and that little dot is the nucleus of the yeast it's the chromatin so each one of those is a yeast and you can see of course there are literally thousands and thousands of those dots each one of those is a small histoplasma organism so obviously you can see the histoplasma within the histiocytes on these on the hne here it's the right setting it's an immunocompromised renal transplant recipient and then when you go to cultures you get this like a kind of a round form with this sun rays coming out of it do you see that it's like like a coronavirus you know those rays yeah. coming out of it like this yes I see that yeah so that is called a tuberculate macroconidium that is the classic form that you see in histoplasma in cultures and you were right to to notice that there are these hyphae coming out of that you know the bottom of it so hyphae in the cold mold in the cold yeast in the beast and those uh, the molds have those spikes coming out of them those tuberculate macroconidia and the uh, the yeast forms are many many little yeast forms filling up these big histiocytes now i'll put this question to you now that you have seen the histoplasmosis and crypto do you, do you see the difference between the two organisms can you see it let me see so let's let's try to clear the annotation and go back again difficulty having it pop up but let's see don't know what I'm doing wrong here. But let's see. Let's see if we could just go back to the crypto. So this was the cryptococcus case. See that? Bigger organisms, halo around the organism. And now look at the histoplasmosis case. Smaller yeast, very uniform in size, and no clear-cut halo, although there can sometimes be, and then turning into a uh, mold in the cultures. Aparna, is that clear? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you will actually, I am pretty sure they will give you a case of if they're going to give you histoplasmosis, they will give you a disseminated one. Chances are very remote that they'll actually give you a, a lung nodule like I gave you before. They will give you this form of the disease where you can see the organisms, the patient is immunocompromised and so forth. So just things to remember. All right. Here's another stem for you guys. So this patient was a um, HIV AIDS patient with a very low CD4 count, came in with extremely hypoxic to the emergency room. And on chest CT, you saw diffuse bilateral ground glass opacities. Transbronchial biopsy was performed and showed this finding. Anybody? Any thoughts? That's someone saying maybe this is just necrotic material, but yeah, cellular in the center. Yes. Anybody? Any other thoughts? What does the stem lead you to think that this is? PJP, right? I mean, right, right. So you don't want to buy it from the histology? <laughs> um, yeah. Probably need use a different stain maybe yeah this. yeah maybe maybe i should have given you a different stain but this is just hne stain high magnification and you know the thing you have to remember with P pjp is it it looks like froth or like what you call necrotic material it looks frothy it's pink it has this bubbly appearance in the middle and in that uh, in that bubbly material you see these little dots so it's a frothy material with little dots inside and it's in the alveolar lumen. So it's really inside the alveoli. I'm trying to get this annotation to pop up, but it doesn't. Uh, this is what it looks like. So it's this froth, which is all this stuff. And in the froth, you see little dots like that. Froth with dots. And this is so characteristic that you can pretty much as a pathologist diagnose pneumocystis right here without any stains. But if the stain were to be done, Aparna, what stain would we, would they do? What would be the stain? It's, it's, it's all, I'm not sure. silver. silver. Which one? Yes, Brocard methanamine silver. So it's the same GMS stain you would do for any fungal organism would also be applicable here. 
but they might actually give you a pneumocystis uh, HNE like this. So I, I think it's good, good for you to know what it looks like. Just looks very pink, a bit frothy looking with little dots in it. Okay, everybody clear? Yes, yeah. All right, so let's move on to the next one. All right, what do you guys, I'm not going to give you any STEM. Anybody knows what this is? We have already seen it before. History. What's that say again? We've got a guess of histo. Yes, correct. This is disseminated histoplasmosis. You see, it's the same, uh, same morphology. Big macrophages with lots of little dots in them. So yes, and, and similar stem would apply. All right, let's go to another one. So this is a patient with acute myeloid leukemia. 23-year-old with acute myeloid leukemia, just got uh, induction chemotherapy, is profoundly neutropenic, and now has a uh, lesion with a, uh, what do you call it, a, a halo sign. And um, in that, you're seeing this, or, or this is an inverted halo sign. I forget which one this is. And then you're seeing this on a uh, lung biopsy. Thank you. Probably unanimously, we're all guessing aspergillus. Yes, correct. And can you guys, anybody tell me what the features are? What stain is it? And what are you seeing here? Um, so, I mean, it's, that like narrow septated hyphae. Correct. Usually see for aspergillus. So Aparna, do you see now the difference between hyphae and yeast? Yes. Yeah. yeah? So elongated yes. shaped yeah. things, right? Yeah. Okay, what else? Where are, do you guys see the septa? Can you actually see them? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? I'm trying to get the annotate again. <laughs> As usual, I'm flailing around for the annotate thing to work. Um, but yeah, the septa are do you see my arrow, the white arrow? Mm -hmm. Yes. These yes. are the septa. One septum here, one here. This is a very beautiful one here. Mm -hmm. So lots of septa. This, the walls of them are, are basically parallel. Sometimes they branch like here. This one is branching here at an acute angle. So if you see that, chances are this is aspergillus, you know, in any setting. There are a few other things that mimic this uh, morphology. One is called pseudalisteria, which is now called skedosporium. So skedosporiasis can look very much like aspergillus, but that's very much a zebra, you know? Aspergillus is super common and skedosporiasis is rare. So things like fusarium and skedosporium can look like this, but are much less common. And you, you know, you can virtually guess this from the stem, right? Profound neutropenia, acute myeloid leukemia and all that. So I think this should be a fairly easy diagnosis to make. So is it halo or, or, or reverse halo? Which one is it for? It's for halo. halo. What's that, sorry? Halo sign. Halo sign, yeah, yeah. So the ground glass is on the outside and the consolidation on the inside, right? What would be reverse halo? So what would be gra uh, ground glass in the middle and con consolidation on the outside? I think that is a bug too, uh, from what I remember. I think it might be mucor actually, it might be mucor mycosis that has the reverse halo sign. I have to go back and check that. But uh, everybody okay with this? Yes. Yeah. GMS stain. All right, let's get to this one. Okay, guys, so I'm going to give you another stem. Breast cancer patient treated with, is profoundly immunosuppressed from chemotherapy, has also gotten corticosteroids for, I don't know, for something else or during chemotherapy, is profoundly immunosuppressed, has bilateral ground glass opacities, and a transbronchial lung biopsy shows this finding on a GMS stain. Anybody? So, I think uh, when we think of GMS, we think fungal. So Very was, good. But then we're seeing some broad-based fungi. Yeah, that is tricky, isn't it? This one. This one yeah. is tricky because they're just two two of but these cysts next to each other. It's not actually budding. It's an, just an artifact. Just the, like the key is in the shape of these aparna, like these little. Do you, anything you see in the shape of these organisms that's slightly different than the other ones? What would you describe it as? What do they? What does this one look like? The one I'm pointing at now? Sickle shaped. Type of yeah, one. sickle shaped or like a cup or a saucer or a helmet. Do you agree? So what would this be then? Someone has guessed PJP helmets. That's correct. They're right. So this is pneumocystis on a GMS stain. This is what it looks like. So on the h &E, you get that froth with dots appearance. And when you stain it with a GMS, it turns black like any other fungus, but it has these cup-shaped or sickle-shaped organisms 
And often there is a little dot within the cyst. You see that up and I'm circling it now. Yes. That intracystic dot on the GMS stain is a very good sign for pneumocystis. Okay. Any questions? Now, in real life, of course, that you don't even have to come to biopsy. Sometimes your PCR is positive. Actually, often the PCR is positive before the biopsy comes back. So I find we have become kind of uh, redundant almost. But it's it's nice to have biopsy confirmation too, I think. Questions, Aparna? Should we move on? All right, let's go. Okay, this is a really nice case. Uh, this is a, let's see, uh, I'll say 41 year old woman. Uh, she's a 30 pack year smoker, heavy smoker, who um, was having, a, she has a history of breast cancer and was having surveillance chest CTs for her breast cancer when this finding was noted on the chest CT. And there was a suspicion for metastatic um, uh, breast cancer, but also a miliary uh, infection. And uh, a surgical lung biopsy was performed eventually and showed this finding that you see at the bottom right. This is an h &E stain. Anybody can put this all together? What's going on here? What's, so can you guys tell me what's going on on the CT? Probably just like small ground glass nodules. Yeah. Or actually, they're solid nodules with some ground glass surrounding and then. Um, is there any distribution to it? Well, perivascular as well. Yeah. <laughs> or peribronchiolar, right? Since bronchovascular bundles run together. How about this? How would you how would you describe this nodule, the one I'm circling now? What's that? Sorry? It seems cavitated. Yeah, correct. It's a little and what is the size of these nodules, Aparna? What would, what would you guess is roughly is Probably it one centimeter, subcentimeter? Subcentimeter nodules, bilateral, some are cavitary. I'm giving you too many hints. Anybody? This is a heavy smoker. So the one thing I didn't give you, but if I gave you, I'm sure you would jump to it immediately. What if this same CT also had cysts? What would you think of them? Are we jumping over to like... Uh... The IIPs or? Yeah, but which one? So we've got, I mean, like a, a LIP. A no, that, LIP, you, you're right. Oh, I mean, sure. LIP does, can cause nodules and can cause cysts too, but there's something else that's way more obvious than that. Langerhans? Yeah, Langerhans cellulocytosis. This is the classic uh, stem for a Langerhans cellulocytosis. It's a very heavy smoker, can be either, either gender, doesn't matter, but very, very heavy smoker, yeah. somebody who has bilateral nodules and cysts. And then the, the uh, histology uh, slide shows you these cells. Do you know what these are? What's that cell? No, no. These are eosinophils, which are very common in Langerhans cell histiocytosis. These cells are Langerhans cells. So this is a Langerhans cell. That's a Langerhans cell. It has a very irregular looking nucleus. Um, and looks a bit like a histiocyte. So these are the Langerhans cells, and you've got sheets of these cells in this biopsy. But frequently in Langerhans cell histiocytosis, you also get admixed eosinophils. Aparna, can you see the difference between these two cell types? Yeah. Yeah? So one has much more brightly orange eosinophilic granules and often binucleated, like this cell here. Those are eosinophils. And then the ones with the irregular nucleus, those are Langerhans cell histiocytosis. But, you know, they... To be honest, they shouldn't be expecting you to know how to identify a Langerhans cell on a biopsy. The stem should be enough. And usually the stem will show you bilateral, cavitary, subcentimeter lung nodules and or cysts. And they usually they give you cysts because, you know, with, with nodules alone, the differential is too broad. Uh, but you 
definitely when they give you that heavy of a smoking history, you should always be thinking LCH in your differential at least. What would be the stains? They will ask you sometimes. They'll give you the stains for Langerhans cells sometimes in the stem. What what stains would those be? Anybody? S100. S100, very good. And what else? Anyone? Let's see if it's in the chat. Uh, nope. So CD1A. CD for cluster of differentiation, 1A. And then there's a new stain that we use sometimes, which is called Langerin. So if they give you any of those and they say it's positive in the stem, you should know they're trying to lead you towards Langerhans and cytos. But by far, the biggest clue here is the, is the smoking history. Big smoking history and bilateral lung nodules and cysts. All right, so let's clear all of this, get out of the annotation, and let's see how much time we have. We have about 14 minutes. Okay, so this patient is a gastric bypass recipient with recurrent pneumonias who had a um, recurrent pneumonias and uh, that occurred both in the right middle lobe and right lower lobe. Uh, patients seem to have a history of uh, reflux esophagitis and was um, complaining of, of reflux during, um, you know, when she, when she went to sleep at night or when she was going to bed. Ref so severe reflux, right middle and lower lobe infiltrates uh, and a history of gastric bypass surgery um, basically presented with at least six to seven admissions, each one for pneumonia, was treated for presumptive, you know, bacterial pneumonia and then sent home, or community acquired pneumonia and sent home. Finally, they decided to do a, a, a biopsy, which showed this finding. So what is going on here, guys? It's like something is walled off or whatever material. Yes. So is this your favorite, like? Uh... Yes, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. This is aspiration, Aparna. Yeah. So your, your pathology rotation paid material. off. Huh? <laughs> No, I don't remember this picture, but it looks similar to something uh, else you've shown me. But yes, uh, yes. so uh, aspiration of vegetable material and then it's kind of walled off. <laughs> yes, that's correct. This is a multinucleated giant cell. And you're right, it's walled off by this histiocytic slash giant cell reaction. And the thing that is a vegetable is the thing in the middle, this thing here. You know, these kind of cells, these are all, the, the whole thing is a vegetable particle. So when you have gastric bypass surgery, you are, you are especially prone to get this kind of aspiration, aspiration of food particles into the lung. And I, of course, I told you right middle lobe or low lobe, but it can be any lobe. And, and you know, they might show you a picture of a vegetable particle like that. But the stem should be alone, recurrent pneumonia, right middle and low lobe infiltrates, somebody with gastric bypass surgery, that alone should make you think very strongly of, of aspiration. All right, questions, guys? Questions for this one? All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, let's see if anybody can get this. This is kind of, this is tough, but I, I hope. Let's see, can anybody get it without the stem? Lung consolidation, patient is from uh, Chicago. Wow, it looks like the same um, east form of... Uh, yes, so there's a lot of neutrophils in the middle, but there is that. That and then there's some in the center. Yes. Because again, are like now our favorites, but we've got a guess in the, the stem as well uh, in chat blasto. Yes, correct. This is another example of blastomycosis. And typically the, the granulomas have a lot of pus in the middle, neutrophils. So they're called pyogranulomas or suppurative granulomas. That's very characteristic of blastomycosis. So if, if that is in the stem somewhere, pyogranulomas, suppurative granulomas abscess like center that's another clue to to blastomycosis so very good guys yeah very good sai uh, so let us clear this one and get out of that okay next one okay here's another one for you guys and let's see if you can get this this patient is a 54 year old never smoker who has been uh, having mild but slightly increasing shortness of breath and dyspnea for a very long time and now has a slightly low DLCO, mixed obstructive and restrictive pulmonary function abnormalities, relatively mild and episodic dyspnea 
uh, which she says that is related somehow to when she when she goes to Florida, it gets better. When she comes back home, it gets worse. Uh, so she eventually had a, a high risk chest CT, which showed this finding, and then had a transbronchial biopsy. Anybody for what the CT shows? I guess it would be like HP. Yes, what are you seeing on the CT, Aparna? Well, it just has this like mosaicism. Yes. Um, yeah, and we have a sign guessing mosaicism too, so. Yeah, I don't want to mess up the radiology, but I to me, it, it might be that they have the three density sign. To me, like there are areas that are relatively less dense, relatives that are more dense and things in between, right? So there's like all three densities or what we used to call the head cheese sign, bilateral ground glass opacities, evidence of air trapping. And then on the biopsy, Aparna, what do you see? Like, what is the thing that, that makes this consistent with HP? Um, I, I see a lot of cells. So it's like very... Um, do you know what those cells are down there in that area? I guess would be like eosinophils. Those are lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Are... Remember, okay. HP does not, even though it says hypersensitivity, there are no eosinophils involved in HP. It's, <laughs> a, it's a lymphocytic disease. So very important to remember. The BAL will be lymphocyte heavy. The biopsy will show a lot of lymphocytes. So remember, it's very lymphocyte heavy. And eosinophils are not seen in hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So this is lymphocyte heavy next to the bronchiole. And then what is this? Anybody, Aparna or any of the other folks? This thing that I'm circling now, what is that? It's also next to the bronchiole, but it's not bigger cells, right? Not lymphocytes. What are those cells? Anybody? Multinucleated giant cells. Yeah, very good. That's perfect. So it's a multinucleated giant cells. And so that's all you want for HP from the histology, right? You want them to tell you that there's it's close to the bronchioles or in the interstitium, there's lymphocytes and there's poorly formed granulomas or giant cells. And everything then fits with HP. So this becomes the so-called non-fibrotic HP, which would fit with the stem as well. Questions, anybody about this, about HP, about the pathology, any of that? No? no? Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this might show up in your boards. Definitely non-fibrotic HP is classic enough that it is, it's worth uh, putting in the boards. Okay, this patient is a 23-year-old man with bilateral symmetric hyalur and um, mediastinal lymphadenopathy and uh, lung nodules that seem to be along the interlobular um, septa and in, uh, bron bronchovascular bundles. Uh, Transbronchial biopsy showed this finding. Diagnosis? We've got sarcoid. Yes, perfect. And everybody's right. I, I Maybe I made it too easy, but I think this is just granulomas in the interstitium, non-necrotizing, well-formed granulomas. Uh, and the lung typically, if, they, if they're good enough picture to show you, the lung away from the granuloma should be normal, which is very different than HP and hot tub lung and, and even infections and things like that. So pretty easy. I don't think there'll be any problems with that. Sarcoidosis, just remember non-necrotizing granulomas and remember the stem will, will should tell you classic things. You All right. In the, yeah, question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's the difference, if there is any, between a granuloma and a multinucleated giant cell? A multinucleated giant cell is just a collection of histiocytes that fuse into one big cell. The granuloma, the the histiocytes come together, but they do not fuse into one. So they're close together, they're clustered, but they don't fuse into one cell. The moment they fuse into one cell where all the nuclei become bunched together, that is a multinucleated giant cell. So they're both different versions of the same thing. Just, you know, they're both histiocyte derived. So your question is well taken and they often occur together, but, but a granuloma is just clustered cells. They don't have to fuse into one big giant cell. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. And then in, um, there's another chat question. Is that eosinophilic material in the three of Yes, probably is, yeah. Uh, so a little bit of necrosis, Sai, you're, you're correct. There's probably a little bit of necrosis in this granuloma, and that is allowed in sarcoidosis. And you I should... guess more... Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. My follow-up would be like, you know, granulomas that you would see typically in like ILDs versus like a necrotizing one from like infection. Yes. Uh, how would you distinguish that from like this? Because you're still seeing some like necrotic material. Yes. So what you have to do is make a good faith attempt to find bugs. So okay. in necrosis, what happens is the, the more 
the more necrosis there is, the more the likelihood that that, that is an infectious granuloma. So when you have lots of necrosis everywhere, that is very, very likely to be um, mycobacterial or fungal infection, very low to be sarcoid. When you have a little bit like necrosis like this, it can go both ways, right? So you have to do your AFB and GMS stains. You have to hope that the bronchoscopists send material for cultures. And then when everything comes back negative, then it's likely that this is sarcoidosis provided everything else fits, right? So it's well-formed, interstitial, lung away is normal. The clinical setting is right. So sarcoidosis in that setting needs more evidence if there's a little bit of necrosis here and there. But from the pathologist's point of view, all we can do is do those special stains and, and look for bugs in them. Thank you. Make sense? Yes, thank you. Very good questions. All right, let's see. Do we have a few more minutes? Okay, four more minutes, Aparna. So I'm going to take it to this one. This patient is a uh, also an immunosuppressed patient with HIV AIDS, has a um, 3.2 centimeter lung mass that was thought to be suspicious for malignancy and was biopsied. Any guesses for what this is? Yes, crypto. Yes, area. very good. Very good, guys. So this is the famous Musicarmin stain. So if this stain is positive, you see these organisms here, the round things with the with the pink or uh, whatever color, those are positive, you are done. You don't have to think anymore. That's cryptococcosis. Just wanted to show you an example. This is another example with blasto. I want to show you something else before we move on. Okay, here's a patient uh, from, uh, this is actually an immigrant from Mexico who was found to have a, a cavitary mass that was thought to be uh, suspicious for uh, malignancy, but a biopsy didn't show any malignant cells, instead showed this finding. What, what is the finding here? It's the endospores within the spherule. Yes, so. very good. Very good, guys. You're, you're completely nailing it now. So this is coccidioidomycosis, right? Perfect description, endospores within those big spherules and a stem that shows, shows the patient is from an endemic area. Okay, what's the diagnosis here? Patient with... Uh, skin nodules, um, uh, cardiac arrhythmia, and, and bilateral lung nodules. Sarcoid? Yes, very good. Non-necrotizing granulomas. Interstitial non -necrotizing. Very good, sarcoidosis. Okay, diagnosis on this one, GMS stain. Same again. Uh, yes, coccidioidomycosis. Uh, so this is what it looks like on a GMS. Very good, guys. All right, this one is same coccidioidomycosis from a CT guided core needle biopsy. Let me see if I can give you a different. Uh, okay, this patient is a 40, 48 year old woman with diffuse bilateral uh, ground glass opacities in the lung. There's subpleural sparing, and the patient has a history of, uh, let's say, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. What is this histologic pattern? So, I mean, you can see that the airways are like, or the alveolated, like the septa are very thick. And very thick, correct. Very are they uniform or not uniform, Aparna? They're all uniform. Yeah, so what is that called when they're all uniform like, like this? The pattern. What's it called, sorry? A NSIP. NSIP, yeah. So they might give you a thing like this where they everything in the stem fits with some kind of connective tissue disease related thing. And they might give you one where the alveolar septa are uniformly expanded. And their, their NSIP would be the right thing to pick. Clear to everyone? All right, let me give you one more and then we'll stop. Uh, I think these are pretty easy. We have talked about them before. Okay, I'll give you one last one. So again, this is a uh, very immunocompromised patient with, a, uh, with multiple bilateral lesions. Uh, and the patient is also neutropenic. What is going on here? What's in the picture? So there, we've got comments that there are two things like they're both high phase. Yes. Be some uh, spherules that we're seeing. I don't think there are spherules. There are definitely high phase. What you are seeing actually here is there, this whole thing, the circle, the sort of destroyed circle, this one is mm -hmm. a blood vessel in the middle of the picture. 
So all these hyphae are going in. You see, there's some inside there too. There's some that are going through the wall. So like an invasive. Yes, this is yes. angioinvasive aspergillosis. This is the classic picture where you see it going all the way from the surrounding into the blood vessel. So this would also, you know, if you have a stem that mm -hmm. a leukemia or something like that, or the appropriate stem, neutropenia and this, you should be confident to call this um, angioinvasive aspergillosis. All right, guys, I think we should stop since we've, we're at the one hour mark, but hopefully you've learned something from this. Maybe if you want to do another one, we can do another one at some point, and then yeah. we record this and put this up for other people to learn from. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Mukhopadhyay. This was Thank great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Aparna, for, for uh, organizing this. Yeah. Do we have uh, time for one question? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Can you tell us what uh, you core would look at? Oh, oh yeah. Versus... And I can take more questions too. <laughs> Would you be able to compare this to mucor? Though I think more the comparison is like actino and mucor. Yeah, or... I let me let me give you the, the skinny on that because that, that actually is a helpful thing. So aspergillus looks like this. It should look like fungal hyphae where the sides are parallel, it branches, right? And the, and there's septa in between, like that. Right? And that the branches sometimes branch again. So that is called dichotomous, like dichotomy, you know, the word dichotomy. It's dichotomous, narrow angle branching with septa. Now, mucor looks like this. So the edges are very irregular. The branching is very weird. Like it goes off in, in odd directions. It's not narrow angle. It's broad angle. And septa, if at all, there might be a rare septum somewhere, but very rare. The shapes of the organisms are very broad and irregular, like that. So that's what mucor looks like, and this is what aspergillus looks like. So okay. in the mucor group, there are actually you might get others like mucor or abscidia, a b s i d i a, or rhizopus. So rhizopus is also in the mucor group. The whole thing is nowadays called mucor mycosis. So that will be your stem. Patient will be usually diabetic. You know that's the, what they like to give in the stem. But the, from the morphology. The irregularity of the fungus is the clue to the mucor diagnosis. And they also like to say kind of weekly acid fast is one of their other... For mucor? No, no, no. So you're <laughs> thinking of, of nocardia. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, so let me, let me give I'm you sorry. a second. Let me, let me just show you that since we're talking about that. So you will also get this differential between actinomyces and nocardia. And what they'll give you is these filamentous bacteria. So long like this long filamentous bacteria. So if you if you get filamentous bacteria <coughs> that are acid fast positive, then you should pick nocardia. Even though actually in, in real life, that doesn't always work. But in, in cultures and in cytology, if you get filamentous bacteria that are acid fast positive, you should pick nocardia. The stem will usually be alveolar proteinosis, brain lesions, abscesses, things like that. They will also tell you that they are gram positive. So gram positive, acid fast, filamentous bacteria. On the, on the contrary, if they give you a ball of filamentous bacteria like this, like a clustered ball, which is called a granule pathologically, and they say, yes, it is gram positive. The organisms are filamentous, but they are not acid fast. Then you should pick actinomyces. So the close differentials really are nocardia and actinomyces, and only one of them is acid fast positive. Does that make sense? And actinomyces, you know, is, is the usual, you know, chest, chest wall uh, involvement, abscess in the chest wall. It will not have this brain and uh, alveolar proteinosis type of stem. Um, patient will sometimes be aspirating. Sometimes that is the stem. But the key thing is that acid fast will be positive only in nocardia, not in actinomyces. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, they love to trick you with that because both are gram positive and filamentous bacteria. They do. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Mukhopadhyaya. I will post this uh, online. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Aparna. And if you can even send me the raw M MP4 and I can post it on my thing as well. And we can do it both ways, you know? So it's it's available wherever. Absolutely. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Bye. Okay, bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.